Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you explaining the next generation consoles and the bad microphones that they come with. Everybody does this Xbox versus PS4 comparison, but there's one thing they share and that is terrible microphones. For those of you that don't know, I got to go to E3 and I got to see the new consoles behind all this shiny glass. There's like handprints and smears on it in some places where people really just wanted to break in there and run off with that Xbox 360 or that PS4. I got to play both of them. I got to use the uh, Kinect a little bit. I got to use the controllers, but one thing I didn't see was the microphones for systems that are supposedly pushing online play and revolutionizing multiplayer and really moving forward with the social aspect. Where are the microphones? And in case you didn't notice, on the PlayStation 4, their default microphone that they ship with is this thing. Yes, this thing. It's a little tiny inline microphone that you plug in. It has one speaker for your ear and a little dangly microphone down there. On the Xbox, you get the ever so loathsome Kinect as your default microphone. If you were wondering where the headset went that you might have seen in some of the trailers and previews and whatnot, that is an aftermarket accessory. This is something that you have to buy in addition to the Xbox 360, and it does not come with this. This you have to pay extra for. The default microphone for the 360 is everybody's favorite, the Kinect. Now, now, we're not going to talk about the Kinect and its video abilities, which are actually very impressive. I'm going to do a different video on that later, talking about some of the really cool things you can do with the video on the Kinect and some of the audio. But the problem with this is it's not a good multiplayer microphone. Neither of these are. The inline mic for the PlayStation is just laughable, and I, th I think the Kinect's going to be more annoying than anything. We're going to swap over to some Call of Duty gameplay when I don't have anything particularly relevant to show pictures about, something that I wasn't able to find pictures or wasn't able to circumvent copyright to get pictures for. We're just going to have COD gameplay in the background. And what I'm going to do first is an objective break breakdown of the positives and negatives of the Kinect mic. We're going to start with the negatives first, and these are the reasons that I think the Kinect 2.0 is going to make a very poor microphone for multiplayer use. What is probably the biggest gripe I have against the Kinect 2.0 is the Kinect 1.0. I got some subscribers together in a lobby, we all used our Kinect mics, and we all had our TVs at more or less normal volume, we weren't trying to be blaringly loud, and this is how a free-for-all lobby sounds with all Kinect mics. This is what I don't know about the rest of you, but I really don't look forward to a future of playing Xbox Online where I can hear every single other person on the map's footsteps and sounds and echoes and their mom screaming and all sorts of noise and echoes off of echoes because nothing fills my hate bladder with more rage juice than echoes and noise spam. It absolutely drives me crazy. Whenever I hear a Kinect mic online, I automatically mute it, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. But you're going to say, this is the Kinect 2.0. It's supposed to have advanced noise cancellation technology. It's got double microphones. It can do some interesting things. And I'm going to ask you, how? How can it do these things? Exactly how does this work? It's only able to do so much, especially when it's sitting right next to speakers. Because of the design of the Kinect, it's going to be sitting right next to the TV, or mounted to the TV, or by the Xbox that's beside the TV, and it's going to be incredibly close to a big set of speakers or a small set of speakers, so there's going to be a lot of extra noise being pumped directly into it. I am not an audiophile, I am not an audio expert, but I am a commentator, and one of the things I have to do with every single video, including this one you're listening to right now, is remove background noise. So I do know a smidgen about noise cancellation, what it does to your voice and its limitations. And in general, the more crazy noise you have going on, the louder it gets, the more difficult it is to remove that and only do your voice. But don't just take my word for it, we're going to do a test of it. Here's a test of my voice and me trying to remove approaching Nirvana music. This is a test of my personal ability to edit audio and remove background noise. This is the default. I'm going to say the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and the rain in Spain stays mostly on the plains. Now if we add a little bit of music from approaching Nirvana, let's see what happens when I say the exact same sentence and try and edit out the noise. Let's do the control first. <laughs> The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and the rain in Spain stays mostly on the plains. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and the rain in Spain stays mostly on the plains. 
As you can see in my after party program, which I'm using uh, Audacity, that's the standard one, it's the simplest to do, I'm able to remove most of the music and make my voice audible, but it comes at a price. It muffles my voice severely. And if the Connect does magically work and it is able to remove all the noise from the TV and all the noise from the background and all the noise in general, your voice is going to sound muffly. Instead of sounding beautiful and sexy like my voice sounds now, it's going to sound somewhat more like this and you won't necessarily be able to get the best quality out of it. And it also has the possibility of picking up a lot of background noise. Now, part of the technology is it's supposed to be able to scan your lips and your location and get a feel for where you are and who's talking and only input your voice. That's if it works right. There's a lot of variables that go into this, and it can pick up a lot of background noise, just like the current Connect mic does. The current Connect mic, I can hear kids' mom screaming at him, and I can hear somebody's girlfriend complaining he's on his Xbox, and I can hear, dude, bro, my turn in the background. Very annoying, and perhaps most annoying, something that we mentioned in the very beginning, is that the gaming headset is sold separately. Why is the gaming headset sold separately? I mean, I know they want more money off of it, or maybe they couldn't fit it in for the price range, but if the Kinect can't do what it was promised to do, then it's just going to be awful, and you're all going to need gaming headsets in order to play online. That was the negative rant. The positive one is coming up right now. I'm going to play my own devil's advocate, and I'm going to say that the multiple microphone array on the Kinect could allow for some very interesting noise removal. The more microphones you have, the more inputs you get, the more interesting things you can do with noise removal, and especially if you have professionals at Microsoft building professional algorithms that can edit audio much better than I can here at home with Audacity or Goldwave or Sony Vegas or anything, some very impressive things could be done with the audio removal on the Kinect and with the identification. Perhaps more importantly, if it's only removing the TV audio and not necessarily some external noise in the background, but if it's just the TV audio, you could potentially have the volume almost as loud as you want because the Xbox is going to know the audio output and it's going to have an exact waveform pre-rendered ready to go and it knows exactly what to remove from the Kinect mic and it can make that very, very easy and very efficient. That, those are some things that are possible. You know, more microphones and knowing the waveform ahead of time are very, very good. The Kinect is also more comfortable than a headset. We're just going to assume that those things happen and it actually does remove the noise. One of the good things about it is I don't have to wear a two pound headset on my head that cancels noise. I don't have to have that little thing in my ear, the people buzzing. I don't have to have the little, uh, uh, what is it, foamy thing in front of my face. I can sit on my couch and wear nothing and just speak and be heard and be replied to in a normal voice and that would be beautiful and it would help improve immersion. Lastly, it comes with this. It's out of the box. It's required to set up. So that means if it works, and I, I really hope that it does, I hope that I'm totally wrong about it being a bad microphone, then everybody will have an out-of-the-box communication that's very easy to use and everybody will be communicating with each other. And I don't even think you can mute it, so just playing with no microphone is not an option. It'll increase teamwork, which I think is a good thing. I've been bashing on the Xbox One and the Kinect for quite long enough. Sony, it's your turn next. Sony fanboys, get ready. I know that a lot of you are PS4 fans. You think that the PS4 can do no wrong, but this inline microphone they have is a joke, and I can't emphasize that enough. I don't. Is this 1998? Is this 1996 when additional microphones to cell phones were all the rage? This is the best you can come up with in your next generation PS4 technology that's supposed to be amazing. Were they really that desperate to undercut Microsoft on price? Because so Sony's uh, PS4, my understanding, I got some articles, I think it was IGN or maybe Kotaku or something, it was originally supposed to ship with the PSI, and that PSI was supposed to have some Kinect-like functions, but they decided to remove that and remove a lot of other things and just undercut the ever-living hell out of Microsoft on price and be the cheaper console at launch. One of the things that might have gotten cut was a headset, because this is just a cell phone mic, and it is so ridiculously cheap. As a matter of fact, it was so cheap, I managed to get on Amazon and find what is essentially the same thing from Samsung for $5.79. Matter of fact, this one's better because it has two earbuds <laughs> instead of just one. It's ridiculous. This, this is just almost insulting to me as a gamer. Okay, so let's talk about, I, I'm, I've kind of bashed it how I feel about it. Let's talk about the actual negatives. Number one negative, I mentioned before, it's very, very cheap. Most of these are very cheaply made, and they're ridiculously simple technologies. There's not much noise cancellation. There's not much uh, compression. There's not much audio removal. There's none of these sort of things that the Kinect or other gaming microphones would have built in. I don't even know. I'm, I'll be optimistic if it has a pop filter of any kind. I'll pass the little simple plastic microphone down there. 
And even if Sony makes a high quality one, just the nature of these things is they're very cheap and they break very, very easily. You pull on them too hard, they break. You bend them a little bit too much, they break. My dog used to eat these things all the time. They're very easy to lose. Most people throw them away. And what that means is that a lot of people, unlike the Xbox, when you get on PS4 online, there's going to be a lot of people with no microphones. A lot of people that didn't know what this was, a lot of people that chunked it, a lot of people that broke it, a lot of people whose cats thought it was the best toy ever. And the voice quality is not so good. It just It is a physical limit of the technology. The voice quality on these are not going to compete with higher end headsets. They're not going to compete with the regular Microsoft headset. And they're not going to compete with even the audio going into the Kinect mic on quality. They're going to be cheap and they're going to be muffly and I hope I'm wrong but they can also brush against your neck, against your face, against your coat, against the zipper and they can just sit there and grind and grind and grind and if you don't know what that sounds like it sounds kind of like this. I'm going to touch my microphone. I don't know about the rest of you but I really don't look forward to playing games with one guy just sitting there constantly going and you can't really tell people to, hey, stop bumping your microphone, hey, stop doing your microphone, because you usually get really angry and respond very, very negatively. It's also not going to be comfortable. I don't know how many of you have iPhones or iPods or use these sort of buds, but it's not going to be comfortable just sitting in one ear all the time. I'm looking at the design right now. It doesn't look like a cheap one. I don't think it's hard plastic. I think it'll be more comfortable than some of them. Actually, it does, does kind of look like slightly hard plastic. It's not designed for comfort. It's going to be very annoying in your ear. It's going to get painful if you game for long periods of time with the microphone. Not going to be fun at all. So I'm really not looking forward to this microphone either. But there are some positives to it. I'm trying to keep this balanced, trying to keep this objective. The positives are not actually anything to do with this microphone but with the design of the PS4 is that the audio port is very simple and that all current gaming headsets are going to work with the PS4 except not, well, not the Xbox one but all the PS3 headsets I believe are going to work with the PS4 if you have Astros now if you have Turtle Beaches now if you have Tritons now whatever you have now it's going to work with the PS4 I think PS4 might also take Bluetooth headsets that's going to be a mixed bag of quality they sometimes have the same problems that this inline microphone has but it won't be like Microsoft Microsoft has a proprietary plug so only new headsets will work you can take your old stuff and plug it in and you won't have to worry about it and no proprietary plugs in the PlayStation 4 means almost any headset will work. PC headsets might work, other cell phone headsets might work, uh, any sort of aftermarket third-party headset will probably work on the PlayStation 4. Like the Xbox, at least it comes with some microphone by default. There will be some hope of sane and reasonable communication online, so we do have that. And it is very, very easy to set up, perhaps more easy to set up than the Kinect. All you have to do is plug it in, but we have to depend on some people to plug it in. And down toward the end of the video, I'm sure that I've, there's already people that haven't made it this far and have left comments, and you're going to say, who cares? Everybody just uses Astros or Turtle Beaches anyway. No, they don't. The headsets are probably the most common aftermarket or third-party accessory in the console world. They sell more headsets than they do scuff controllers or control freaks or anything else. But at best, and I'm saying optimistically here, 10 to 15 percent of people that own an Xbox or a PlayStation 3 have a headset. And that's a very optimistic number and you probably think, oh well yeah, everybody does that I know. Maybe your friends do, maybe you're a hardcore gamer, maybe everybody that plays Call of Duty does, but that's not everybody in the world. What that means is optimistically, if you know, let's say 10 percent of people buy headsets, that means there's 90 percent of noise spam for the rest of us, which is very, very annoying. And if anybody wins in this next generation, it's going to be headset companies because there's going to be a lot of people buying headsets. I mean, this is good for me. I'm sponsored by Astro or will be soon, but it's going to be kind of bad for you guys. There's going to be nobody uses mics anyway. Well, that's kind of sad. Then why are you going to bother with online gaming at all if you don't want to use microphones or communicate? And there's always a, a group of people that believe the technology will work because they said it will work. Yes, they said all the last gen technology would work. They said Pepsi Blue would taste great. A uh, marketing team will say anything. They will spin anything. Technology is not magic. I have a general understanding of the technologies involved in these products and I'm skeptical. I hope that I am totally wrong about this. I hope that both of these microphones are awesome. I hope the Connect is just as easy and noise canceling and awesome as it could be and should be and I hope that this PlayStation microphone is not cheap not crappy and that it feels good in my ear but I'm not feeling it I'm not optimistic about it knowing what I know about audio and technology I believe that there are limitations in place that neither of these companies is going to be able to overcome within a sane and reasonable budget and that's why I think the next generation consoles will have bad microphones anyway I hope you enjoyed this commentary I hope you learned something useful and I hope you consider a headset for next generation drifter out